We're with uh, Gino Lewis here on the John Mandola Show. We're driven by McCarthy Tire Service. And uh, Gino, of course, with the Montreal Alouettes. And uh, Gino, let's first talk about uh, making it to, to the big time and, and playing professional football. It's got to feel pretty darn good. Yeah, man. You know, first off, I just want to thank my Lord Jesus Christ as always for, you know, all my opportunities. Thank you for having me on here today. Um, yeah, man, Montreal has, uh, these last three years that I've been there have been great for me. Um, it's been a, a great learning experience, um, a time for me to grow and find myself as a person and a player. Um, you know, in this past year, uh, basically had my, my best season at receiver in my whole career. Um, which was, you know, was was a big thing for me. I've uh, been working really hard to get to the point that I'm at right now. Um, definitely still some goals I'm trying to get to and accomplish. Uh, but, you know, um, the city of Montreal has been great to me. It's a great place to be. Uh, I'm happy, you know, they took a chance, you know, on me and gave me opportunities to, you know, showcase what I, what, I, what I can do in my talents. And, you know, I've just been trying to take advantage of it, you know, full force. You know, some people could be a little bit stubborn with that opportunity and maybe say, listen, it's only the NFL. That's all I'm doing. But yeah, right. and it, it's, there's some good darn football up there in Canada and the opportunity to play in the Canadian Football League is an honor. So uh, let's talk about your experience with your coaches, uh, with the players up there and, and how football is received in Canada. Yeah, so, um, yeah, like you said, uh, you know, just being from the States um, and just having, you know, just, you know, going to two great schools uh, out of co uh, in college, uh, you know, my mindset was always NFL. Like, that's what it is. And honestly, even to this day, that's still my goal and that's still a goal I feel like I'm going to accomplish at some point. Um, but, you know, you have to understand there's there's levels and there's, and there's steps to get to that point. You know, and everybody, you know, there's different, everybody can't be a first round pick. Everybody can't get drafted. You know, everybody can't be an undrafted free agent. Some guys have to go play arena. Some guys got to play the CFL. Some guys got to really go, you know, to France and places like that to, you know, just keep their dream alive. And, uh, you know, that's what the CFL has been, has done for me. And, you know, just being up there realizing that it's a literally a, a huge league. Um, like it's, 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 you get paid to do it. You know, you it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great, great opportunity to, you know, make a living. Um, you know, and just keep getting experience. Uh, and, uh, you know, for me, like I said, I'm grateful for the CFL and, 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 and them for, you know, giving me the opportunity. And, uh, you know, the coaches have been have been great with me. I, I know for me, the, my first year back in 2017, uh, it was it was a little hard for me because I was on practice squad for most of the year. I only played in two games that, that season. And, uh, you know, the, the Canadian, the Canadian money, the exchange rate, you know, from Canada to America is, uh, it's a, it's a difference. Um, you know what I mean? The, the, the Canadian dollar is worth less in the States and things like that. So, you know, being on practice squad, it was tough. I had to we literally had to make a decision of, do I want to keep my dream alive or do I want to go back to the States and get a, you know, a regular job and, and, you know, start my life. And I wasn't ready. Um, I wasn't ready to do that yet. I knew that I had so much still in the tank and, um, I was glad and grateful that, you know, I took that, I took that step and that opportunity to, um, you know, stay there for my whole the whole year on the practice squad i showed each and every day you know in practice against the first team defense you know i made plays each and every day and that's all i had in my mind was go out there every day and just keep making plays like that was my main focus well that's something you've always done is believed in yourself whether it's on the basketball court or the football field but let's talk a little bit about some of those trying days back on that practice squad and again there could be mm -hmm. worse situations you're on a practice squad but what were things that you were kind of focusing on or the coaches or the management said, listen, we need you to do this, you know, what were a couple of things that, you know, whether it was route running or, you know, working on some other things? Yeah. So for me, um, when I first got up here, uh, the first coaches that I had, um, it was probably the hardest playbook I ever seen in my life. And mind you, when I got up here, I only got up, I only got up to, uh, to Montreal with three days of camp left. Uh, so, at that point in time, you know, the odds were really against me. There was two practices left and there was a preseason game left. And uh, basically, um, when I got to the practices, they weren't in full pads anymore. They were they were just really just doing a lot of walkthroughs. They had a couple of seven on sevens and things like that. So, you know, for me at that point in time, they just told me to just learn the playbook as much as you can and as fast as you can. Um, because, you know, I'm, I've always been confident in my hands, uh, you know, I, I've always been confident in getting open and, you know, running my routes and things like that. But 
uh, my routes have always been, you know, the main thing that I always kept trying to work my craft on. Because um, a lot of people don't understand, you know, in high school, you know, playing quarterback my junior and senior year, uh, it's a it's a it's a huge transition from going to a quarterback to a receiver. Even though I played receiver before that, but I didn't know everything that I know now when I was playing receiver. Then you know, I, back then I was just using my athletic ability and just jumping up and just catching and just just trying to get the ball in my hands as much as they can just to you know make plays but now it's it's you, you got guys out there that's getting paid too that's at defense and defensive backs and things like that so you know i had a i always did for me i always ask myself you know what do i do it for and why do i do it and you know those two things you know are what drive me each and every day to you know keep getting better and not let anybody stand in my way of where i'm trying to go and what i'm trying to do your dad, your family, always uh, pretty darn busy with athletics. So talk about being a kid growing up and, and just being around sports your, your whole life. Yeah, you know, so, you know, before I came to Wilkes-Barre, uh, I was with my mom for the first 13 years of my life. And, uh, you know, just uh, my mom, she basically just put me in football to make sure that I, I you know, stayed out of trouble, you know, and, and, and um, you know, because, you know, when you're young and, and you're a kid and you're just hanging out with your friends and, you know, sometimes you do devious stuff, sometimes you do things that you're not supposed to be getting into. And, um, the reason why I'm grateful for that is because I learned a lot of lessons, you know, growing up and, and things that I've seen and things that I had to go through, you know, moving up with my father, you know, was a big, big step in my life just because, you know, like my, my mother told me that it was some things that he was going to be able to teach me that she couldn't teach me as a man. And, and, and she just told me, like, if I want to get to where I want to get to in life, that he needs to be a part of that. And I, I trusted her and I had to believe in her. And, you know, my dad, he had got himself together. And, uh, you know, he was really, really strict growing up, real strict, uh, you know, made sure because he had been through so much already. So he didn't want any of us to go through the same things that he went through. And, uh, you know, it was hard. It was sometimes it was things I had to do that I didn't want to do. You know, I had to go to on Fridays before I could go out with my friends and, and uh, you know, always had to make sure my brothers and sisters had everything that they need, you know, before I went out. And, uh, you know, I didn't have as much leeway that I knew a lot of my friends had. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, back then, I might have not understood it as much as I do now. Uh, you know what I mean? So, uh, you know, just and being, just being competitive with my sister, uh, you know, all my brothers and sisters and, and and my father, you know, always bragging about who's the best in the house and things like that. <laughs> you know, so it just it just brought out, it just brought out the competitive nature of me, which, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very competitive and I don't like to lose. And I tell this I tell people this all the time that I'm a sore loser. And, you know, I just, I don't accept losing, but I learn from it. Wyoming Valley West and Myers, two schools that you did go to and uh, you left impressions of both, played football, played basketball, um, some good relationships. Uh, you still have some conversations, whether it was uh, teammates or, or some coaches? Yeah, yeah. So I actually, I actually talked to uh, Pat Keating. I talked to him the other day. I talked to Coach Baranski, who's the new um, head coach at Valley West now. Uh, I seen actually seen him today. Uh, and then, um, yeah, I, I still talk to a lot of my coaches, a lot of my teammates, you know, see how they're doing and things like that. I keep up with a lot of the guys that, you know, I went through war with, but, you know, at the end of the day, I told the coach tool, actually, I just, he just texted me the other day. Um, I stay in relationship with a lot of them guys just because, you know, if it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. I'm grateful, you know, that I had the athletic ability and I had the smarts to, you know, get to where I was, but, you know, they helped, they helped pave the way for me and, and, and kept telling me the things that I needed to do to, keep progressing and keep getting better as a person and as a player. And, um, you know, I, I never I never take those things for granted. Um, you know, I'm not saying that things were perfect. It was times, you know, where everything wasn't always where it needed to be or, you know, I thought one way, they thought another way. But at the end of the day, we always came to a compromise and it always usually worked out. Um, so, you know, like I said, um, I, as as I went through, you know, high school and getting to college and like that, I realized how important relationships are with coaches. Um, uh, just just being able to go to somebody that you can talk to whenever about anything and and just and and them understanding about what you're going through. You know what I mean? You need always need somebody there that you can trust and that they can trust you too. Let's uh, head over to Penn State University. Talk about uh, some of those relationships you still have with some of the players you played with and your overall experience as a Nittany Lion. Yeah, um, still still keep in contact with some of my, my roommates, Malik Golden, uh, Brent Workerson. Uh, Kill Lynch, they were my roommates, you know, going um, <clears throat> coming out of Penn State. And then, you know, I played with a lot of guys. Uh, I played with a whole bunch of guys there. 
that I still keep in contact with. I talked to Allen Robinson here and there. Um, Deshaun Hamilton, I, I just talked to him prior a week and a half ago. Talked to Chris Godwin. Um, last time I seen Saquon was um, I went to Baker Mayfield's wedding um, last year, uh, which was beautiful. I seen a whole bunch of guys out there. Um, and you know, Penn State was great, man. Um, you know, just when I, you know, when I first got there, uh, it was Bill O'Brien was the head coach, and and uh, we had we had some things going, and you know, he had to end up, you know, doing the thing that was best for him and going to Houston, and then you know, uh, Franklin came in, and you know, things changed a little bit, but you know, I've always been a person to where I'm, I can adjust to a lot of different environments and situations, so. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for the for the relationships and, and the people that I met at Penn State. Uh, you know, I'm an Indy Lion at heart. Uh, you know, if it was, I wouldn't be the person that I am today. You know, going through all the sanctions and things like that. Like, it's a lot of people that wouldn't have been able to deal with that. They would have folded up and just and just impacted it up. You know what I mean? But you know, I wasn't. I was built to always, you know, just finish things out until until you know it can't be finished out no more. And and uh, like I said. Uh, I love Penn State, man. I love coming out in front of Beaver Stadium and 110,000 fans. You know, it's, it's nothing like that. It's nothing like coming out to that to that whole to that whole stadium. It's 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 a, it's a once in a lifetime thing, which I'm grateful for, and I'm grateful for all my teammates and all the guys that you know I was able to make relationships and, and keep keep relationship with. Now, you know, I got a lot of friends now and teammates that are married, got kids, you know, and they grown so. Uh, and it's just good to see. It's good to see, you know, some guys where they are now, and just praying for guys, you know, that that are still trying to find their way. And then you head to to Oklahoma uh, again. Uh, you had to meet some quality players, uh, learn a whole different system, be in a different program. Uh, not many people will ever get to experience two uh, highly competitive college programs like you did. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, leaving leaving Penn State was probably one of the hardest decisions of my life. Um, you know, just. Like I said, being a PA guy, you know what I'm saying, and, and and being able to you know go to go to your go to your state school uh, was a blessing. And uh, you know, but at that time in my life, though, I was you know I had went through so much that uh, I was really being a little bit selfish. I had to be selfish for myself at that point in time. I had to think about you know this is my last go around, this is the last my last college career, like my last college season, and um, I had to try to make make the right decision for myself, and I could live with it. And you know, I got there. Uh, coach Bob Stoops was the coach, was the head coach. Coach Lincoln Riley was the offensive coordinator. Uh, Baker Mayfield, basically, um, when they, when they, everybody found out I was in the, the uh, transfer and things like that, I got some guys got in contact with me. Baker Mayfield had got in contact with me. The coaches at Oklahoma had got in contact with me, and I had, and I was trying to make a decision to where to, where I wanted to go, and Oklahoma was one of the the schools that was in there and you know what I mean Sterling Shepard was leaving that year and I, and I just myself I'm just like I think this is a great opportunity and I also had a chance to talk to my boy Justin Brown who was at Penn State before when I got there um, and then when the sanctions came he actually transferred to Oklahoma and played for Bob Stoops and you know I, I talked to him before going there and just asked him you know what was the situation and what was the deal because I never been to Oklahoma I never really been to that part of the world so it was a it was a it was a big change for me but I noticed when I got there, you know, the team was very so talented. Like it was so many guys on that team. Like it was the whole offensive line got drafted. Uh, you know, we had Samaje Piron and Joe Mixon in the backfield. We had D.D. Westbrook at receiver, Mark Andrews at tight end. We had myself. We had a whole bunch of guys. Man, it was it was it was it was it was great to see how competitive and how hard these guys work. And you know, I during when I was at Penn State, you know, during the sanctions, you know, we couldn't. We couldn't get, we couldn't win in the Big Ten, and we couldn't go to, you know, bowl games and stuff like that. So at the time, and then you know, the two years after that, we were able to. But when I got to Oklahoma, their main goal already was we're going to win the Big Twelve. Like that was that was like that was already like a, a, a known fact. You know what I mean? And it was it was national championship or or, or nothing. Like that, that's really that's how that's how they that's how they did it there. And and that was something that I had to adjust to because. Like I said, when I was at Penn State, we were just trying. We were trying to stay above water, trying to make things, trying to keep things right, trying to keep things going, and and we did that at Penn State. We did the things that we were supposed to do, and uh, you know, just when I got to Oklahoma, the offensive mindset was unbelievable. Um, I never really been in a spread spread offense like that. Into, uh, 
before since probably high school and that was that was just when things was really starting to get going for the spread offense when I was in high school and stuff like that but you know what I mean I played with a lot of a lot a lot of great guys at Oklahoma still talk to them today like I said I went to Baker Mayfield's wedding, um, Baker Mayfield's wedding uh, a year ago um, and and you know uh, it, it was it was a great opportunity and I was glad you know to spend my last year there it was it was it was a great great time your sister um I know you're proud of your accomplishments, but uh, knowing you and, and how you react, I think you're you're equally as proud of what she has accomplished. And kind of similar path to you, where she's at one school and and went went to the other school for another year. And talk a little bit about your relationship with her and, and how you feel about it. Yeah, my sister Alexis, man, that's my best friend. That's my best friend. Me and her, we we been we've been together since since she was born. You know what I mean? And and uh. My sister, I, my sister was is just always so smart. She was always so smart. She did the right things. She, she was very mature at a young age. She did a lot, you know, just just growing up and chores wise. And she, out of everything, my sister was the one who kind of like she she held a lot together that a lot of people don't even know. Like I held a lot together, but my sister, like she just she never complained, never never whined, never. She just did what. She, she had to do and, and that was it and um you know she had a great career at Iona when she first went there uh and you know at, at some point in time she she felt that you know that she she could play at a higher level and she went she ended up going to Seton Hall playing in the Big East and her last year was last year she had to sit out her first year there um but she's actually about to be done her master's uh and this this, this month she's about to be have her master's this month um and uh I'm just so happy for her she um She's in a situation now where, unfortunately, where, you know, this whole corona thing going on is she has to wait and see, you know, about, you know, her her, her next step and her future. But, you know, I'm confident in my sister and her game. You know, we talk and we talk crazy all the time. And, you know, but my sister scored 2,000 points in high school, man. It's not a lot of it's not a lot of people that, you know, that accomplished that. And it's really, really hard to do. And uh, I used I loved watching her. Like her game was just so it was just so fluent, man. She was just so smart with the ball. She was aggressive and she could just, she really can score when she wanted to. And, um, you know, just seeing her, just seeing her in college and, and, and to keep doing well, like I wasn't surprised. It wasn't a surprise to me. I always knew what my sister was capable of. I knew the potential that she had. And I was just grateful to, you know, be a part and help her and everything that she did because I know. You know, I didn't take it easy on her when we played. I, I did it. I used to, I used to make her cry when we went and played one on one on the basketball court, and and you know what I mean. It made, it made, it made her tougher, and it made her who she is today. And you know, I'm grateful and humbled, you know, to have a sister like that in my life. Becoming a man not an easy accomplishment for guys that are 50 <laughs> like me, but <laughs> even it just learning, you know, managing money and and learning about all these different things in life, and you know. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what the last couple of years have been like for you. You said, hey, I was in trying times. I didn't know if I was going to even be able to survive in Canada at that moment. Uh, but somehow you, you dug your heels in and you did. And, and here you are. And you just hope to keep growing in that area. Absolutely. Um, yeah, man, when I came out of college, you know, um, I, I thought things would have went different for me at first. You know, I, everybody has their their way of thinking and mindset of what they think is going to happen. You know, I, I had a good pro day at Oklahoma, and um, I had talked to about 15 NFL teams at the time. You know, and I thought, you know, during the draft, I didn't, I, I wasn't expecting to get drafted, uh, but I had heard from some teams talking to me about, you know, undrafted free agents and stuff like that, and. And the thing, some of the things just didn't go my way. It didn't go my way after the draft. Like I didn't hear it back from some teams, and I didn't understand. I didn't understand it, and I didn't understand how many politics is in it. Also, you know what I mean? It's 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 also about connections and who you know, and and all that type of stuff. And um, I just had a fun. Like it was a it was a point in time where I had to just I had to humble myself because you know just just. When I had talked to my, my my former agent and he was telling me that you know uh, the opportunity for you to go up to Canada uh, uh, for the for the last three days of camp, you know I'm thinking in my mind like only three days of camp, like I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do with that, but this is the opportunity that I got a hand right now. This is this is all I got, so I got I had to put all my eggs in the basket, um, you know, and just like I said, growing up and when you move out of your your, your, your parents' house, it's, it's now you got to pay bills. Now you got to figure out, you know, 
you got to start putting priorities first and figuring out what is what's the most important and um i was all over the place man i was i was i was i was in i was in oklahoma then i went to miami to go train down there then i left miami and i came came was living in new york city then left new york city went to montreal uh you know i had to keep fighting each and every day and then used to come back come back and i was living in new jersey and then uh you know went back up to montreal and i just had to keep going back and forth and i went to tampa and i was just i was all over the place and, and the thing is too what i learned is um just traveling man traveling is is is, is such a good thing for young people because you realize that it's so much there's so much in this world like i had went to the bahamas for the first time last year i went to mexico for the first time last year um and it was i never thought i would see anything so beautiful i never thought i would see water that clear in my life man. I never, you know what i mean like it's just some things that I, I never seen i never i never thought i would experience because none of a lot of my family haven't experienced that or, or my friends and things like that so that was just the mindset that we had was just figure out how to keep going well and just and just keep moving forward in life and um you know you know like i said for me it was you know my, my goal has always been to give my family a better life and you know to make sure they're not struggling and my brothers and sisters and things like that and make sure that they have what they need so with that being said like it's hard for me to 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 be distracted from that. Like, it's not a lot of people or a lot of things that's gonna take my mind away from helping my family. You know what I mean? Because there's there's other people that's doing the same thing, and I have to be grateful and humble. Uh, you know where I am, just because it's a lot of people that wish they were where I am right now. You know what I mean? And um, I'm just gonna keep grinding and keep fighting it out. Yeah, that uh, that humble humble story you were saying how much you appreciated. Uh... The places of, uh, of heading out and, and seeing the yeah. ocean, different things like that. Uh, great to hear. Um, and I know you're working hard and getting ready for a season. We don't know if a season's going to happen in the CFL, yeah. the NFL. We're not sure, but you're preparing yeah. as if it's going to happen, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I'm actually in back home. Um, I got can't go back to Canada right now because the borders are closed. Uh, but yeah, no, I work out every day. Um, I've been working out. I always got to stay in shape and working, just going to like fields, you know, doing cone drills, running hills, uh, uh, doing conditioning myself. Um, I just, I just, I got, I got to keep on it, man, because at the end of the day, I know it's, it's somebody else out there that's, that's, that's going to be ready when this is all over. They're going to be ready, and somebody's trying to take my spot, man. You know what I mean? And that's, that's, that's the, that's the competitive nature, and that's just how the game is. Somebody is coming next, and. When it's your time, you better take advantage of your time while it's your time because at some point it's going in. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I, I stay, I stay, I gotta stay on myself, man. I just gotta keep discipline. The thing about right now is, usually I'll be in Florida at a facility training somewhere, uh, you know, with a, with a, with a, with some NFL or CFL guys or guys that I used to play with, some teammates and things like that. And it's all structured. You know what I mean? Like you gotta be here at this certain time. But now, it's not like that. So. You got you kind of you got to discipline yourself, and some people it's hard for them to discipline and structure themselves. You know what I mean? But and especially like no gyms and stuff. Like I've been out here, I've been uh, uh, curling center blocks, man. I've been uh, putting center blocks on my back, trying to squat, doing things like that. You know, just trying to find it any way I possibly can because. Uh, I can't. I can't let myself go and just let myself just uh, let the time pass. You know, this is all, this is still a time, regardless if there's a season or not. You have to be able to, you know, keep yourself right because you never know when this, when this all can just change around and switch up. Definitely old school, but uh, right now you gotta have that old school mentality with the circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Gino Lewis, uh, a pleasure to catch up with you, hear your story. Uh, continued hard work, continued blessings your way, and uh, we wish you the best, hopefully, for the CFL this coming season. Thank you, man. I appreciate it so much.